Hey y'all, welcome back to another video here with me, Rich on Rich Aesthetic. And AI in China, kind of a funny story, right? Country that rewrites history day by day and controls speech. And AI, as everyone's excited for it at the moment, is generative, free-flowing speech. So I think the question for many Apple users is how is Apple going to pull this off? Especially now that they've announced to the market that it's on the way pending regulatory approval. So before we jump into this, check out the chapter markers down below, jump to where you want. But first up, what we know. What we know from Apple's own iPhone 16 purchase pages in China, on the Chinese side, right, is that they are Apple intelligence capable and that Apple intelligence is coming later this year pending regulatory approval. Uh, sorry. <laughs> not later this year, but later. That could be 2025. That could also be 2026. Who really knows? Besides that, there's no hard set date. We don't really know much else. What we do know is that there's planned support for Mandarin Chinese for Apple intelligence um, coming at some point in 2025. Now, that doesn't mean a whole lot. Given you know how Apple's marketing works, they would love for the story in mainland China to be that once Mandarin Chinese is supported, it will be launched here. And maybe that is what's going to happen. Who, who knows? Um, I'm just wondering what will happen in China if you know Mandarin Chinese is supported, iOS 18.3 comes and goes, iOS 18.4 comes and goes, and so on. What will the story be here? Because from some recent articles I've read, the iPhone 16 is more popular than the iPhone 15 was in China. Now, that doesn't mean a whole lot, right? Because a lot of the market just uses WeChat, doesn't really use any Apple features. They just want the phone because it's like a status symbol. And the iPhone 16 has a lot more color options. So maybe that's all what that is. It could also be that they are wanting Apple intelligence and they may never get it, or at least not in the same form as what we're going to get in the West. Next up, China's AI regulations. China has actually banned ChatGPT due to claims of like misinformation regarding the cultural genocide in Xinjiang, uh, 1989, Tiananmen, and you know other things like that. They claim to be untrue. On top of that, my understanding is that Western large language models are also not allowed to be used um, in China. There's a preliminary draft for China's proposed AI law translated by the Center for Security and Emerging Technology that has over 80 articles focusing on fairness, impartiality, transparency, explainability, proper use, human intervention, and more. Now, that last one is interesting, as I'll get into later in the video. But if you read the article, it says AI developers need to have human supervision and audit mechanisms in accordance with the law. Now, if you know anything, that's just like how the CCP state media has to make sure they don't talk about topics they shouldn't be. And of course, China is in a weird spot because they themselves claim to be, you know, the leader of AI. Um, they have, I believe, the most patents regarding AI language models. They do have to play it a little carefully here because if they botch consumer AI in China, then they don't really can't really have a claim to that. And honestly, like in the world, not, as far as I know, no one's talking about Baidu's Ernie chatbot, whatever that's called. Which, by the way, regarding this free speech thing, right? So here is Ernie. All right, real quick. I actually got banned from Ernie. Uh, I, I should have known this was going to happen and taken a screen recording, but I didn't. So what I'm about to say, which was me walking through the steps. So that's exactly what I did to get banned. So if you're curious, here we go. You, you, you cannot even try to talk to it about certain topics. Here's me asking about what happened in 1989 TNMN. The message disappears from the message composer when I send it. Then it reappears and the chat is kind of locked. I had to hit a button that restarts the chat. And here's me asking about what's happening in Xinjiang. They don't even have a response for it. They're not even like feeding in propaganda or fake news to hide it. They're just not allowing the topic to be discussed at all. I'm going to get into Apple's AI, Apple intelligence here in a moment, but I think we can all agree that Apple's definitely sweet talking the government right now, trying to get that regulatory approval. Um, but they also have to 
somehow maybe show that like what they're doing is different than what like ChatGPT is doing. And that does bring me to the next chapter in this video, which is the extreme oddity. And I say that because, so like ChatGPT, we know, right? You put in a question, it gives you text. As much text as you want. You can ask for an essay to be written about any topic. Now, Apple also has text features, but these are like rewriting features. I, for as far as I understand, there's no feature where you can ask Apple intelligence a question and then get for like an essay and then get pages of text from it. That's not the way it works. However, you could be say in the pages uh, app, writing up a document, select all the text and ask it to rewrite it or grammar check it, uh, change its tone to be funny or professional. So it does have that. And then in uh, John Gruber from Daring Fireballs, I think it's called like The Lake Show or something, uh, around WWDC, he was asking Craig Federighi about like, what if someone writes something like completely obscene? Like, But like, so what you could do with Apple intelligence is you can sit down and write your own story that might be inappropriate or goofy or committing crimes in the story select it and then say, uh, make this more serious. <laughs> but that's your story that you that's started right. with. The, the Apple and it could be a fictional story. Right? right, it could be fictional, but that's not being generated. You're the person, you're the one who wrote the story. So if mm -hmm. you know now it has more professional sentence structure, <laughs> that's on you. I, I feel like this is a very interesting balance you guys have. It is, and I mean, we, we literally had ethicists involved in our, our uh, discussions on this. We, we do have our roots as a personal computing company. I mean, this is a tool for you. So if you, if you were writing a story or, uh, you know, maybe, maybe you are writing something about a, a very harmful phenomena um, for for the purposes of illustrating why it's bad, or to uh, mm -hmm. you know uh, protest against it, or you know, and if you're not careful, a model that you say, well, summarize this for me, or help proofread it for me, uh, make it more professional. A model that says, I, I, I'm sorry, I can't do that. This this is this seems to be about harmful topics. Well, now that's that's not empowering you as the user of the system. We, we aren't going to introduce the harm. We're not going to amplify the harm. Um, but we do think it's a tool for, for you. Uh, and so that's, that's the line we're, you know, carefully trying to draw. We're not, yeah. Yeah, and, and we published a blog post um, uh, yesterday which goes into some depth about how we built these models and how they work and so on and so forth. Some uh, technical behind the scenes stuff. And in there we actually listed some of our um, values about how we approach our uh, Apple intelligence. And, um, and one of those is respect the user's agency. And this is why I think this is so crazy, right? Or the extreme oddity in China. Because what if I'm writing a paper on uh, 1989 Tiananmen, and then I want to get grammar checked or change its tone or check for tone or whatever, right? I, I, this is my opinion, right? I feel like the CCP wouldn't want that at all. They don't give a single damn about it's the person that wrote it, not the AI. They would rather Apple just not do anything with that text. In fact, they'd probably like Apple to report that person to them. So I don't know how Apple's going to get around that. They're not creating the misinformation, as the CCP calls it, but they'll rewrite it. How do you get around that? I, I don't know. I'm not smart enough to know that. My worry with that is, does that mean Apple changes the LLM that's used in China to work for the CCP and the mainland Chinese audience? <clears throat> that means Apple users who are in China, would they be then switched? Or if you come with an international phone, would you continue having access to the Western version of the LLM? I don't know. It raises a lot of questions. I am really excited. iOS 18.2 beta just dropped. I'm not on it. I'm done with the beta because I can't use the features anyways, but I'm watching from afar, literally. And I think Genmoji is really, really cool. I'm so excited to play with it. Even Image Playgrounds looks like a really fun way to send ridiculous fucking 
images into the chat, right? I, I was never going to mid journey creating funny images and then going back to iMessage to send the image. Let me know down in the comments uh, if you're excited for Apple intelligence. Are you what, catching up with the features? Are you also worried about what it's going to look like when it comes to China? Love to have a discussion with all of you. And while you're down there, consider hitting the like button, subscribing, and I'll see you in the next one. We're just out. Peace.